بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم today we are going to discuss the module of antenatal care uh, the antenatal care module is quite bit similar to the maternal medicine module the template will be the same the only difference is that the presenting illness will be the problem the patient will be presented with uh, in the maternal medicine module we discussed that the presenting illness will be the medical uh, illness or the medical history but here we will go in the same and usual template we will start by the usual steps introduction how to make a rapport with the patient then uh, explore the aim of the consultation and if the patient has any concerns or expectations then you will set your agenda and you will start taking the history or the information gathering the first part of the history will be the analysis of the condition of the patient that she presented with then we will go through the steps later the medical history the drug history the gynae and the obstetric history and the mental history uh, is very important in cases of antenatal care so what is different to today today we are going to discuss how you are going to break the bad news because so many stations in the antenatal care you will face a mother with a baby with congenital uh, anomaly so uh, this will be the different today in uh, the antenatal care module how to break the bad news uh, and this also will be shared with some other modules like the gynae oncology when you are going to break the bad news for a lady with a gynae oncology so breaking bad news as usual you will start the station with introduction and making a rapport with the patient previously we discussed in the first two minutes in front of the station you should identify what kind of station you are going for it is a sad scenario or it is a happy scenario so in breaking bad news this is a sad scenario so you will enter the station with a neutral facial expression i cannot say with a sad facial expression you will go inside with a neutral facial expression don't try to be funny no smile uh, on entry in this station uh, nice to meet you will not be suitable in this station so while you are you are introducing yourself uh, to the patient you can say how are you doing today because this situation is not nice to meet the patient in such a situation so this will not be suitable in this case uh, please close your mics close your mics please okay next the aim of consultation as usual i understand that you are here to discuss the scan or the test result the patient is coming to discuss the scan or test result which shows uh, bad news so you are going to break this bad news always ask did anyone tell you about the result of the scan or the blood test because this will save your time sometimes in the scenarios the patient knows already the result so you will waste your time if you will start explaining things that the patient already knows so always ask after i understand that you are here to discuss the scan or test result is that right did anyone tell you about the result do you have any information about the result she will say yes or no from here you will start building your plan for the station do you have any other concerns or expectation this is mandatory in each station as we decided before because this will give you the clue of the station what are the agenda of the patient upon which you will put your agenda coming to the history do we need to take history in a breaking bad news yes or no this will depend on the scenario so the first thing to look at the domains you will be tested in is information gathering is one of the domains to be tested and at the end of the task look in the next 10 minutes you are expected to 
if you find to take a relevant or targeted history, means you need to take history in this case. If yes, this means you have to take a targeted history related to the condition. If no, you don't need to take history. You will not be penalized if you didn't take history, but it is okay if you can take some information from the patient just to break the ice between you and the patient before breaking the bad news. So this is very important because in some cases of uh, breaking bad news, information gathering is not asked and you will waste the time in nothing. So if the history is needed, will you take it before or after the breaking bad news? This is a common question. Am I going to take the history before telling the patient the bad news or after this will depend actually on the role player or on the patient. The patient, of course, will show some concern and she will ask like, is everything is okay? Uh, what about my result? So if the patient asks it once, you can say, I understand how concerned you are. I will explain the result for you in a moment. But is it okay to ask you some few questions to know more about you at the beginning? Then I will explain the results for you and I will discuss all the open options in your case and I will involve my consultant in the plan and I will write back to your GP or your midwife. So this, if the patient accepts it or the patient asks it only once. But in any scenario or any task, if the patient is still asking, if the patient is kept asking, uh, can you tell me about the result? Is everything okay? At this point, you have to break the bad news first. Go through the steps of breaking bad news, and then you can take the history later after taking the permission from the patient. So to start by the history or to start by breaking bad news, this will depend on the agenda of the rule player or the agenda of the patient, not your own agenda. So you have to be ready in both scenarios. What is the relevant and the targeted history in this case? This case is a dramatic scenario. So the patient will take a lot of time crying or uh, be showing that she is depressed. So you need to be targeted in your history in breaking the bad news, not to waste your time. The age is very important, especially for genetic abnormalities. A, a patient was down, you should know her age because this is one of the risk factors. What else? The obstetric history is very important to hear. Can you tell me more about your previous pregnancies? If the previous babies has any problems, did you do any screening for Down syndrome? And any problems so far in this pregnancy? If she received the folic acid or no? And then you will go to the medical history, any medical conditions that may be the reason for her uh, anomaly for the anomaly of the baby or the drugs she's taking, because the drugs also, especially in cases of epilepsy, may affect the baby and may lead to anomalies. Do you smoke or drink alcohol? Because smoking and alcohol also are important or parts or risk factors for anomalies. And the family history, if there is anything running in the family. These are the most important points here in cases of breaking bad news. These are the points which are critical that has to be mentioned in any station. And you will add the mental history in any case because this is a sad scenario. The patient, especially if she knows about the result, you have to explore her mental condition. Now is the steps of breaking the bad news. Am I clear so far? Am I audible? Yes. Okay. So the first step in breaking the bad news, ask the patient if she wants companion. But breaking the bad news, not all the breaking the bad news, you will ask the patient to, uh, for someone to attend the discussion with her. If the patient has HIV, for example, you cannot ask her to bring someone to be with her. This is very confidential, and you cannot ask her to break her confidentiality at the beginning. Later, if she wants, it's okay. But the usual and the first step in setting the scene for breaking the bad news, asking the patient to 
call someone to attend the discussion with her because you are going to give her a lot of information today. Uh, so now, if you have any report or ultrasound or test result, please, please, it is a very critical point for safety to confirm the name and the age of the patient on the report. So never ever start discussing the result of the report of ultrasound or blood test without confirming the name and age and age number of the patient on the report. Now you have to prepare the patient. You have to prepare some warnings <laughs> or sign posting before giving her the bad news. So uh, do you need to give one or two sign posting or warning? This will depend on the seriousness of the condition. If it is serious, all the recommendation is to give two warning shots or two sign posting. If it is mild or correctable anomaly, you can give only one sign posting, but it is okay to go through the same steps in both cases, but don't increase the anxiety of the patient. Go step by step. So the first sentence you need to say in all cases, I'm really sorry, it's not good news, if it is serious. If it is isolated, correctable, or mild condition, so you can say, I'm so sorry, but the news I have may be disturbing for you. <coughs> I can see, you can, so you can say any one of them, you can say any one of them, no problem, but this, is, this will be the first warning or the first sign posting. Now coming to the sign, second sign posting or the second warning. This will be different. So if it is a serious condition, you can say we have serious concerns about your baby. The sonographer has serious concern regarding your baby. So serious concern here. If it is not serious, if it is isolated or correctable, you can say we have some concerns about your baby. Some concerns, so serious concerns, if it's serious, if it's isolated, you can have some concerns about or regarding your baby. The idea not to increase the anxiety observation before giving her the breaking bad news. Now, breaking bad news, give it direct. Give it direct, please. Don't twist or don't try to turn or to change the uh, your a way of approaching the patient or telling her the fact. Give her the fact directly. The scan showed that your baby has an abnormality called talibus. The scan showed that your baby has an abnormality called ecogenic power. Then start explaining this. But before explaining, you have to remain silent for some time. The recommendation is to wait for five to 10 seconds and count on your fingers. Actually, I don't find this practical. So just tell the patient's abnormality and remain silent for a little bit and then start explaining. I'm really sorry to be the bearer of such news. I'm really sorry to carry this disturbing news for you. If you wish, if the patient started to show that she's uh, distressed, that she's uh, sad, or she started crying, uh, you can offer her some time for herself. I can give you some time for yourself and we can carry on later, or you can call someone now if you want. So silence, then start explanation. What type of bad news? We said serious and isolated or correctable. What is serious? Serious means any lethal or incompatible with life. For example, an encephalin. This is a serious anomaly. If the patient has an advanced cancer, this is a serious problem. So you can say here again, I'm really, I'm really sorry, it's not good news. We have serious concerns regarding your baby or regarding your scan or regarding your blood test and then give her the bad news directly, then silence, then show some empathy and ask her if she wants some time for herself or she wants to call someone now. You can ask her to call someone at the beginning and after breaking the bad news, especially in serious cases when the patient has started to cry or to show that she's very sad. Also serious, 
any anomalies that results in serious handicap even after treatment. For example, the spina bifida is still after treatment, is still there is possibility that the baby will be handicapped. Serious conditions means the patient can have termination under clause E at any gestational age. So it's not limited to 24 weeks as other conditions. So if it is serious or lethal, incompatible with life or it will result in a serious handicap, so this case can be terminated under clause E at any gestational age. Please, if you are going to for face-to-face -face examination in serious conditions or in lethal anomaly, please don't use drawings. It will be uh, very bad or uh, nonsense to uh, draw this anomaly. But if it is mild, isolated, or correctable, with good outcome, especially those with a small heart defect or abdominal wall defect or isolated pelvis, you can say, we have some concerns about your baby, and you can draw here. It is a mild anomaly and a correctable anomaly, so it's okay if you can draw here, but please don't draw in the serious anomalies if you are going for face-to-face -face examination. If it is isolated or correctable anomaly, you can terminate up to 24 weeks. After 24 weeks, the patient has no right to terminate at this point. And termination here will be under clause C up to 24 weeks. But if it is serious, up to, after 24 weeks, the patient can have terminate. Uh, in both cases, the patient will need assessment in a specialist center, but most probably in isolated or correctable cases. After explaining the result, ask the patient if she wants some time for herself. Ask the patient if she wants to call someone. Then take her permission. Is it okay to continue? Uh, uh, are you ready? Are you sure that you can, that we can talk now? Then more explanation with anomaly in lay language base. The problem in your baby is that start explanation in lay language. Don't use jargons here because this is a problem. This is a repeated mistake that you will start explaining as if she's a medical student. If it is lethal anomaly, you can say that your baby may be able to survive inside the womb because the placenta carry over most of the room. But after delivery, sadly, he will not be able to survive on his own. So this is a common sentence. You can use it in any lethal anomaly. The plan of management if it is not lethal anomaly, after your permission, this, these things has to be fixed in all the stations. You will be referred to a specialist center called the fetal maternal unit, where a detailed scan will be done by a specialist called the fetal maternal specialist to look for, to look for any other abnormalities. We may recommend some blood tests and the needle test to check if your baby's genetic makeup is normal or abnormal. So, specialist center, detailed scan, specialist fetal maternal, blood test, needle test, all these has to be mentioned in all cases. Baby doctor is important also in ill cases. The baby doctor will talk to you about the outlook of the baby after delivery. So, these are fixed points in each station. You are going to bring the bad news for a lady with a baby with congenital anemia. The point of termination of pregnancy. If it is not lethal, explain for her the expected course of treatment. Her care will be under multidisciplinary team and specialist center. And if the patient asks for termination, in most of the cases she will ask. If she didn't ask, you can explore sensitively the option. Uh, for example, uh, Sarah, I'm sorry to say that, but some women find carrying a sick baby overwhelming and difficult. So they choose to end the pregnancy. What do you think about that? If she chose the termination, or if she asked for termination from the beginning, you will offer her the options and the timing of termination. And if she's more than 22 weeks, you will offer giving the baby injection to stop the heart before termination to avoid the baby being in pain or harm after delivery. So this is a point of termination. Always, as usual, ask if there is any questions she wants to ask. 
the patient will start blaming herself. In each scenario, the patient will start uh, or will put the blame on herself. Uh, why, why it happened to me? Why, why especially me? Because I'm smoking? Because I was, take, I was taking these drugs? You will use the usual phrase or use the usual sentence here. Sarah, I don't say that. It's not because of anything you did or you didn't do. It is a common or it is a rare condition that may occur in anyone. So this will be the answer to this question. Another common question in all of these stations, the patient will ask, will this happen in my next baby? Will it occur again? Either you know or you don't know the answer. Either you know the recurrence rate or you don't know the recurrence rate. If you know it, tell the patient the recurrence rate accurately. If you know it. But if you don't know, please don't invent an answer. Don't invent an answer because, because this will affect your mark in the clinical knowledge. So you can say it's not up to my knowledge right now, but I will check or I will ask my consultant and come back to you. And also I will provide you at the end a written information leaflet that contain all the information and all the figures you want to know about it. So please, if you don't know information, don't invent an answer. Finally, the conclusion. The conclusion, you have to show sympathy again. Sarah, I'm so sorry again to be the bearer of such news, but we are here to help and support you, whatever your choice, if she wants termination if, or if she doesn't want. I suggest you to read this information leaflet about your case, and I will give you some contact to some support groups for parents of children like yours. They will tell you their experience, arrange another appointment with the consultant, and you can come again next time with your partner, and I will write back to your GB or your midwife about our agreed plan. So these are the steps of breaking the bad news. We will use it today, and we can use it also the next uh, module, which will be the gynae problems and the gynae oncology. He will go through the steps and the station will go smoothly. The patient will show that she said she will cry. The idea of this station, most of this station will have lay examiner. So you have to show the lay examiner that you are supportive, that you are taking care of the patient.